Hi everyone, this is Brayden here from VoiceFlow, back for another VoiceFlow tutorial video. And today we are going to be talking about variables. Now we do have some other videos which go over blocks uh, specific to variables, such as the set block and the if block. But today we're going to be just having a very general discussion on what variables are and how you can use them within your project, as well as some of the other intricacies that you can, as, and uh, advanced concepts that you can have with variables in VoiceFlow. So let's dive right in. So the first thing uh, you're going to want to know is how to actually create uh, variables. So within VoiceFlow, you can go to our left bar here and you'll see this little icon called the variables icon. And we can click on this and you'll see it pulls open this small little tab and you'll be able to uh, flip between local, global, as well as add variables and you'll see a list of variables here. Now we'll go over sort of each of these concepts in depth. So the first thing to know is the difference between a global variable and a local variable. Well, actually, you know what? Let's go over what a variable is in general first. So if you're completely new to the whole concept, you can think of a variable like a container. It holds data and you can put things in uh, and pull things out of the container. So a good example would be uh, the, let's say we create a variable for uh, number. Uh, so if we were doing a calculator Alexa skill and we want to have two different numbers, we have a variable for number one and number two. Uh, of course, every time uh, we want to do a calculation, we don't want to have to use the same numbers. We need to figure out a way to get uh, information from the user, store it in the number one and number two variables so that we can then perform the calculation. So that is a, a little handy use case of when variables make sense. You would never want to have a calculator that could be either you know, only numbers one and seven, because you're always going to get the same result. So variables allow for you to take a much more dynamic approach to building because they can store any sort of information that you put in them. So you can ask the user, you know, give number, you know, give your first number and they'll say seven and give your first number and or sorry, second number and they might say five. And then those two variables will store the data and then you can then use it. So that is a powerful aspect of variables, but I'm sure you know we'll go over this a little bit more in depth throughout the video. Um, so back on our screen here, we have uh, local and global. Now the best way to describe how voice flow works, and this is gonna affect local and global variables, is uh, you can essentially build a file system. So you can imagine uh, your voice flow project kind of being like an onion, it has layers, and you're gonna have your outside layer and then all of your sub layers beneath it. And so what a global variable is, is a variable that can be accessed throughout your entire project. And so for example, if you wanted to have a variable for the user's name, you might want that to be accessible throughout the entire project, uh, regardless of you know, what layer they on, uh, are, are on within your Alexa skill. Uh, however, the local uh, variables are a little different in that they can only be uh, accessible to one layer uh, at any you know sort of point in time. And why this might be useful in certain scenarios, it's let's say you have a really complex Alexa skill with tons of different interactive stories all on one skill. If you had a name variable within each uh, different interactive story, if they were all global, it would constantly be colliding and your stories would have different names and it would be a big mess. So what the local variable allows you to do is have a, uh, a name variable specific to each part of your Alexa skill. So you can have a name variable for your first story, a name variable for your second story, and a name variable for your third story, and it would all be different. And so that is a good way to describe the different difference between local and global variables. Global variables, again, to recap, are available, available throughout your entire Alexa skill through every layer or every flow, as we say in voice flow, whereas local variables are only accessible to the current layer or flow that you are on right now. Great. So let's actually uh, go ahead and create a variable. So I'm going to create one called name. I'll make it lowercase, though. And uh, I'm, you'll see here, I don't have any local variables, but I can create one called, uh, let's call this number, or num1 for number. I'll create one for num2 as well. You'll see here, they are separated. So we have all of our local variables uh, specific to this flow on our local side. And if we go into global variables, it's only gonna be, uh, or sorry, it's gonna be accessible everywhere throughout your project. So let's quickly create a flow and I'll show you what I mean, just to do a quick little example. 
So if we were to connect this up and enter this flow, you'll see in the left here, we're now in a different flow. And if I go back up, or sorry, if I go to variables, you'll see we still have our name variable, which is global, but we will not have the local variable that we made previously. So if I make another num1 variable here, or actually let's call it num3, and then we go back up to our root layer or our root flow, you'll see that our variables have now changed and we only have num1 and num2, but we still have our global variable of name. And so that's the best way to describe local and global. Great, so now we've created our variables. Let's actually go ahead and use one. So I'm gonna delete this flow and I gotta update this here. You'll see that flow now moves down there, but you know there's many other videos on flows that you can check out. Um, and so let's do, let's get the user's name. So let's do this here. Actually, let's ask them for a number. That might be better. Uh, hi there. What is your uh, favorite number? And we'll put this in the Brian voice because that's my favorite voice. And then what we're going to do is use a capture block. Uh, where is that? I think capture is in here, but I can't see it. Oh, no, it might be in logic. There it is. Okay. And so we're going to create a number. Or actually, I think we already have a local variable for number, so let's use num1. Great. And then we're going to uh, ask them for their least favorite number. What is your least favorite number? And we'll have this also be in the Brian voice. And then we'll do one more capture and we'll get their uh, least favorite number. Let's do num2. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to ask them for their least favorite and their favorite number and then combine them together and then give them the, the combined result. And then, so what we'll do right here is after we capture that into num2, let's do a set. There we go. And we're going we're gonna to set a new variable. I'm going to call this result. Uh, I'll put it in local result and we will set result to the variable uh, value so let's do multiplication so let's do num1 times variable num2 okay great so we are going to set the variable result to the uh, result of the number one and number two multiplied together and so we're going to ask the user and then we're going to give them the response Say, uh, let's say your new number, your new number is, and let's give them uh, results. Okay, there we go. So we have a very basic sort of uh, flow here that's going to ask the user, what, hi there, what's your favorite number? The user will then give their number. It will be stored in a variable for num1. Then we're going to have what is your least favorite number. We're going to do a second capture for num2. We're then going to use a set block, which allows you to uh, manipulate variables and, and set the values. And there's a whole video on that. Uh, and then so we're going to use the set to uh, create and uh, set this result variable to the value of those two multiplied together. And then we're going to give the user their number. So let's upload this. I'll tell you, I wish this was a live stream sometimes because we could uh, have ongoing feedback, but uh, for now, this will have to do. Hopefully you uh, joined our VoiceFlow community on Facebook. That's a great time where we do a lot of these sorts of videos, but with more of a live stream approach. Okay, Echo, open Braden test. Hi there, what is your favorite number? Seven. What is your least favorite number? Five. Your new number is 35. There we go. And so you see, we just did a little bit of basic multiplication using variables. Uh, and so that's really exciting and it allows us to do a lot. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to go over in terms of variables. Again, from a very high level, what they are, they are these data containers that allow you to uh, have more dynamic skills because rather than having to 
you know, always have a calculator that gives the answer 35, you know, with five and seven, you can have the user actually set the information by using variables which contain their response, and then you can do things with it, such as in this skill where we set a result variable to the value of two variables that the user gives, uh, and then we are able to give that variable back to the user. Great, so that is variables in voice flow. They are incredibly easy to use, and we hope you guys are able to build some amazing things with it. I'll see you in the next video.